What's going on guys, all of Buzzle here, and I am back today with um, a new take on du Double Turbo Energy Mew, and this time we are trying to utilize the um, Dreepy uh, from, I believe it is F Fusion Strike, as sort of a cheeky new tech card in, in that Lugia matchup. And before, we have seen Mew uh, mess around with the that Aer Aerodactyl package to, to sort of try to be the equalizer in that Lugia matchup, but never has um, been super consistent. And I saw this list that Xander Perro played at Knoxville, I believe he made like top 32. I had to give it a try, and it was very fun. It plays very similar to your double turbo Mew, but um, you do have that that, that dreepy, which is very very funny in the Lugia matchup. Um, so the the whole thought process behind it is we want to use Echoing Horn to put something like a Manaphy, a Dunspar, a Pumpkaboo onto their bench. We want want to gust it up, and then we're just gonna use Mew to copy that that dreepy and use an in infestation so they can never retreat that Pumpkaboo. We'll have Oracorio down so they can never damage us. And we'll Pidgey out so we can never deck out. And even if our opponent fills up th their bench, they see the Dreepy as our win condition, we can go Collapse Stadium, Lost Vacuum to force them to open up a bench spot. So this is a very well thought out list by Xander. Xander is one of the best deck builders in the game, so I always love to see what he brings. Unfortunately, he didn't uh, go as deep as I, I heard he, he hoped to. Um, it kind of sucks that he had to... Uh, his deck was streamed very early in the tournament, so the cat was out of the bag uh, very early, which is sort of a uh, disadvantage to him. But I'm um, sorry if my voice is still still wrecked. I'm uh, I'm sick, so we're I'm trying to keep keep going. Uh, luckily, I am negative for the unnamed virus, so that is excellent. But I'm gonna keep trying to make this d d daily content going. Hopefully, uh, tomorrow. Or Wednesday, I will have a Knoxville slash Bochum video, depending on when Limitless publishes those lists. So stay tuned for that. Um, and if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing and um, liking this video, sharing it. It goes a long way, and we're pretty darn close to that 200 mark, and it would, it would make my day if you'd slap that subscribe button and, and get me there. So um, I might be playing around with this deck in the uh, Sunny's Weekly Tournament tonight. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet. Probably depends if I have time, and... Maybe if they don't drop uh, lists, I, I will end up probably playing it because I won't have to make my, my videos late in the day. But um, regardless, um, let's get into the battle. All right, on to our first game here. We're winning the coin flip, so that's awesome. Mew always loves to go go first. It's one of the most powerful decks in format when it gets to go first. And we're getting mul or we are mulliganing, so that's not good for us. But this hand is not great, but we can hopefully work with it. So I'm going to ultra, I'm attached to double turbo. We're going to Mew Mirror, it appears. So I'm going to Ultra Ball out. I guess both our supporters and I should have gone for the Cramromatic first to um, see if I hit a battle VIP. I don't think it changes whether I play that Ultra Ball or not. Uh, Frank, <laughs> luckily it does hit, so we will be able to draw significantly more cards. I will grab Double Genesect uh, just to so we can draw as many cards as possible. We hit another battle VIP pass, so we are off to an excellent start. Um, our Corio is very good in this matchup to force our opponents to have more power tablets. Uh, another, another forward Genesect, and I'm a Chromatic out a Quick Ball. I can grab Pat to the peak here, so I slow my opponent down because I am. I do have a Lost City and a Lost Vacuum in hand, so I will have lots of ways to bump that Pat to the peak, and we'll retreat back into the Mew and pass just in case they're they are fusion build. We don't lose our belt and our Mew. So, they open up with double VIP pass, and that's pretty good for them. So, it'll be interesting to see. Going first is definitely awesome. Uh, discarding a boss is a bit unfortunate because it means we only have two bosses, and that's not. Uh, we can't go tr tr boss, boss, boss to win and just kill three Genesects. So, we definitely need to take this knockout on the next turn. This host is not playing Silene and Palpad. Just a judge. We did hit a vacuum, uh, luckily, and my opponent just passed. They had no out to the path. So I am not going to gust here because I don't need to. I'll just take the two prizes here. I'm just going to try to go 2-2-2 to win this game anyway. And I don't want to bump the path to the peak because I have a couple answers in my hand. And also, my opponent um, was not or was very bothered by it. So we want to uh, make things as difficult for my opponent as possible. We do see a pal pad early, which is kind of interesting. Um, and they do have a vacuum, so they will start drawing cards, but not as many. Going to Genesect in play, and only four Fusion Strike Pokemon. 
in the boss order, so they're going to be going for an aggressive knockout on my and their an ultra boss is probably going to be V Max. No offense to Genesec, that's kind of weird. I feel like you'd I know you need the damage modifier, but I feel like you'd at least just take the guarantee with the V Max. I mean, they found it anyway, so. I think that that was probably a slight misplay by, by my uh, opponent, but we'll take it. So I'm just gonna gust this uh, Genesect. I have that. Uh, we'll take the taking the knockout. Let's find my last boss's orders. So I'll VIP. I will ultra out the VIP and the collapse to find my final Genesect, and we'll start getting through the deck trying to find that last boss's orders. And we do find it um, conveniently. So we will use the system, and then we'll just. Um, vacuum and we can bump that uh, VIP pass make it a little or um choice belt excuse me make it a little harder for my opponents to uh, knock our army V max back I think our only thing we like, really could lose to or put us in a bad spot is our opponent had like Roxanne path and then could also um KO this active MUV there's the Roxanne and tablet so we have to be definitely concerned about this we hit rope and carts are not great cards at all I've only two Genesects for my opponent though, so that's awesome. So my hunt is playing the Aerodactyl build. We can just for five. Looking for that path to the peak. Um, that lost vacuum is a bit annoying. We only played one belt in this list. So as they find their other Mew Max, another plus five with Genesect, but this is the max amount of cards that they have. And there's the concessions. They didn't quite quite get there. And we're on to our next game. I'm recording this, uh, at least editing it on uh, Sunday evening. So um, Andrew Hedrick uh, did win the Knoxville Regional Championships. Extremely, extremely impressive when he backed back regionals. And I have to say that's one of the most impressive feats we've seen in a long time because um, I know that there's the, the list of players who've done that is relatively long. I mean, like longer than I think most people would think. But doing it in today's age with 1,000 plus player regionals is completely ridiculous. So huge props to Andrew. Um, he's a player I, I really first heard about during the pandemic era. Um, Pokey Hawkeye always seemed to be near the top of those Hexter Weeklies and Chill Series tournaments, even those early li limitless qualifiers. So uh, yeah, um, it's a great job, Andrew. I doubt he's watching this video, but um, I, it's, it's very impressive. Watch that Lugi V star. Always happy to see that Weezing go down. I can't believe Eternatus got all the way to the finals. And I mean, it really showed. I feel like Eternatus showed its true colors there in the finals. It really did not set up at all. And I don't think Brandon played his best games of Pokemon ever either. We're against Vikavolt this time, which is not. Um, we got the choice belt down, which was very important in case we get item locked. It's not our best matchup in the world, but it's certainly one that we are okay with. We have to be careful of that Drapey on Sky Seal Stone, or just um, Ryko, or yeah, like Drapey on Sky Seal Stone, Double Drapey on, things like that. So, I think we have a Cave of Toughness, which is pretty bad. But, point went sec. I chose to go second, which I think is pretty greedy if you're playing this deck, because, yes, you do have a solid chance to get item lock, but it's never going to be a majority of the time. And, it's such a greedy choice because, Instead of me getting one item, one turn of items, like I would if you you go first, I get two. And I get a turn of items in with, with supporter, so it's, yeah, I think it's just pretty greedy. Like, yes, sometimes it will pay off and you you get the item lock, but the majority of the time it's going to backfire. Like, if you could get item lock me like 70, 80% of the time going first, I would say it's probably worth it. But... This isn't like Seismito that all, all it needs is a DC to attack. You need quite a few cards to pull off the combo, so. Yeah, my opponent just missed straight up, and this is a bit unfortunate. I have to my loss to the early like this. I think I probably should have played the Chromatic first to see if I found a counter stadium. So, yeah, I'm going to grab that Lost Vacuum to bump the uh, Kick of Toughness. I definitely should have held out, though, that Chromatic first, because I... Um, using this Lost City early could be very bad because I I'm only playing one in this list. So, um, Drapion could just, you could go Drapion Ditto and then my, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for me to win. 
we just take that first knockout. If my opponent does not have the immediate response with the Drapion, we should have this one in the bag because we can just dust the Crobat. So, I'm just going to go for the steel cards. And even if this Mew goes down, we have a solid um, hand to come back with. We have the Mew, Path of the Peak, Roxanne. Uh, I've lit up my opponent to two and lost and um, shut off their abilities. So, we are definitely um, in a pretty solid position uh, regardless of what happens. Of course, we would like this Mew to stick around, but we do have a uh, backup plan if things were to go wrong. Getting this guy's shield is pretty good, but they put it on the Greninja, which I'm assuming that was a misclick. Because, like, you at least always put it on Crobat to at least have the option to, even if you um, plan to use Sky Seal Stone this turn. I think it had to have been a misclick. Retreating to the Drapion. Yeah, and just an tail. So that's very questionable play on my opponent because now uh, they that that um, Sky Seal Stone could be an easy way to draw out of this Roxanne Path after rock them, but. Now it's not going to be quite that easy. So we do hit that. I'm debating whether I want to play Path or not. I do have Sky Seal Stone to find the Path on the other side of this Roxanne. But I think I'm okay with um, holding out and pathing afterwards here. So I'm going to Quick Ball out the Pidgeot and grab Mew. The, the, the Pidgeot's in this deck just so we can stay infinite in that uh, Dreepy Lock state against Lugia. And I... And my opponent just conceded. I wonder if their hand with the Rock's hand wasn't very strong because I feel like they still had a chance to win. But uh, nonetheless, we will take those. Uh, this hand is not very good for us. We need this Chromatic to pad them against Lugia. So hopefully we can show off the, the, the Dreepy this game. Uh, that Mulligan's not helpless. At least they opened Charizard. Oh my goodness. This is bad. So I get rid of... Yeah, I guess Judge and Tablet to grab a Mew. And I pressed two Mew Vs and a Mew Vmax. So this is already extremely rough. I will play the Switch Cart. Just because I don't want to lose it off of Marnie. I want to change I did make to Xander's list when I was playtesting the games with it. Is I cut one cart for a rope. Because I thought that uh, with no cross switchers that rope could be nice. It's like a pseudo Gus card. But it can uh, be kind of anti-synergistic with your Dreepy Lock play. Um, where if your opponent's just going to try to gust up a Genesect to stall and break your lock. Um, if you have a Scape Rope with your only switching card, you're going to, of course, move their locked Pokemon out of the access spot. So, Switch Card could be something better to, to uh, use over that Escape Rope. I still think Escape Rope is probably a little better because even if that situation does arise, which is an incredibly niche situation, um, you can just go Rope Boss or you can attach Retreat. Like, I think you're still fine. I don't... I, I, I think like the amount of time you can, uh, rope will be valuable versus the amount of time it would be detrimental is probably means uh, more toward the valuable side, but that could just be me in the limited games that I played with this list. My opponent is off to quite the, um, I mean, not the greatest start ever. Like, they, they got the hell out of the Lumineon, though. Their hand must be decent if they're doing that. So we're going to judge them. This was a pretty nice judge, I would say. Because we can quick ball for a Genesect, and then we can bench it, evolve into the VMAX, and then draw two cards, and we have the quick ball to guarantee find another one. Uh, the, the Sky Seal Stone is a uh, Sky Seal Forest Seal Stone is an excellent find. In this, in this situation, Escape Rope is excellent. And of course, it's right there in the prize. It's right where we like it. So I don't think I had the Eye Star Alchemy. Uh, looking for that rope, and then I was, oh yeah, I just saw it in the prize card, you ding dong games. Oh wow. Well. Um, I, I'm sort of debating on whether I want to leave this bench card open, or bench the Genesect and Fusion Strike for five. I probably should have benched the Genesect and drawn five cards, because I'm sort of, um, my hand's sort of weak, but my, my, my thought process behind it is that if my opponent does take this knockout, they're going to be bumping my stadium. But I don't know, I don't think it was a very good play regardless. I think I should have just been to the, the Genesect first, and we have the cart luckily enough, so not never punished, but uh, I don't think I played that super optimally. But we did not get a chance to show off the Dreepy because of a brick from my opponent, but that's okay. Um, and then on to the next one here. We're very, getting very lucky with these coin flips. And another rough hand. I had a lot of bricky hands, like not... I don't like spending tabs early. 
Another Lugia, so hopefully we can get we can show off the old Dreepy here. So there's Mew and Genesect. Oh, I have to bench Dreepy early, which is fine. The hand's clunked though. Like, I don't want to burn these tablets early. I don't want to collapse early, but I kind of have to start drawing cards. I would have to collapse early, which could be a misplay. But I'm just yeah, I just hit I hit the judge was okay, and I'll pass. Hopefully my opponent is sort of lacking. Um, we can take out this only Lugia maybe. The the yard right off the rip is pretty annoying because that means I need to have two damage modifiers to KO this one Lugia V. My opponent is starting off very strong with that incense with Archaeops and then can discard with a quick ball. Most likely gonna find it back up Lugia or maybe even that Orange Guru. Or even Lunion might have made sense if they didn't have a supporter card, but so destroying two energies is quite major. Um their hand is it means their hand's probably Pretty good. So you have to imagine that this Ultra Ball is going. I find Pumpkaboo, which is kind of an interesting find. I don't understand that really. So, I so research my opponent. I don't know why they grabbed the Pumpkaboo because, like, even though they bumped my collapsed and gives them four bench, they basically just burnt a bench spot on it. So, but the, and dropping the Pumpkaboo means it's something we can easily lock with Dreepy. So, all right, this is pretty good for us then. She, and they're making Duraludon build. All right, welcome to ladder, I guess. <laughs> so they they um, read the wind out a Lumineon. I'm debating on whether I want to play Equinhorn or not, but I think since they already have the, the pump boot down, I will just try Chromatic and find a switching card. But instead, I'll just double tablet and Judge. We are we drew a very good hand off of this Judge. I will in vacuum of the Lost City and bump that Choice Belt. And we can bench the. I, I, I think I was like debating whether I wanted to take the bench spot for Oracorio or something. But I think I mean, to taking this Lugia out is already pretty good for us. Definitely could have an argument to, uh, to be made of um, Echo Hunting down that Luminion to try to limit their. Or to try to make it easier for my, myself to go 2 2 2 to win this game. But I wanted to have higher odds of finding this actual knockout here. And of course, Chromatic is not being very nice to us this game, but that's okay. We can pass the peak, make life difficult on my opponent. We have the, we have the loss back even to reset on ourselves. This is where Mew is just so strong because we uh, take that aggressive early knockout and we also just say, hey, I'm going to draw all my deck and I get to choose who gets to play with abilities. And it just makes it really hard, because when I'm playing with uh, powerful supporters like Jugs that um, disrupt my opponent's hand and set them back. Definitely um, one reason I really like to, to play Mew because it just you have so much control over the flow of the game. So there's a Duraludon down, which is pretty annoying for us. We have to use our path to the peaks wisely to get through it. There is no more energy. And discarding out that single strike energy. And just a Serena. I think they should have played the Serena before the Aurora energy there. The top deck, once again, is very nice to us. So Ultra Ball and find the other Mew so I can copy that Max Miracle. Keep that path lock established. And also I don't want to play the, uh, the, the Judge. That's my opponent's a zero card hand. And my opponent is, uh, if my opponent doesn't draw anything, then yeah, we can just Techno Blast take this knockout. And yeah, my opponent does concede. And on to our final game. I'm playing second this time, which um, is not very good, but we have a pretty good hand. Looks big and speakable to once again based on that mulligan. Uh, we do get a, we get a mulligan, so no, it's just Jolt's gun with Empoleon. So this is interesting. It's like a Melanie Jolteon build, huh? I've never seen something like this before. The quick ball out of the Jolteon V, and this one Vigable too. This is interesting. <laughs> so they get the attachment on the, the Jolteon. Um, get a training cord down early. They get that water back. Energy search. Water another water. We'll call it double water probably then. Yeah. So interesting to see what else they have. Um maybe we have the mini on. I was like you okay. Music is going to here's a pass. Interesting. So a bench. And Mew, I will quick ball out the Ultra Ball to find another Genesect. 
as I said earlier, my hand is quite good here. I can bench all the Mews, and then I can Fusion Strike System for three. Any attachment is awesome. Only Fusion Strike System for one. Um, Pokemon's interesting, but I don't, I don't know if I want to drop that Jolteon. I think I'm just going to pass. I have that Sky Shield Stone in my back pocket. And I have an Energy Attachment and a Mew V Max. I'm not feeling terribly threatened. Even if they do get a Jolteon play set up, it's only 100 on two Pokemon. And I can still have a relatively easy time taking that knockout back. Only need three modifiers. And with that Sky Seal, or with the Four Seal Stone, um, I do have one of those guaranteed. And I have plenty of uh, ways to dig into my deck with those Genesects. So I'm not, I'm not super concerned or super pressured by what my opponent's playing. So there's an Ultra Ball out of Switch. So that means they likely have another switching card in hand to use that Max Thunder Rumble on us. So opponent is setting up rather nicely with like no Muse or anything. I don't know why you're playing Jolteon um, and Polion in a Jolteon deck. I feel like Jolteon already has a pretty solid time into Lost Box. Not that I played Jolteon in a long time. I haven't really played it at all since Manaphy got printed. It was all solid in that meta, but I don't, it was not nearly as, I mean, it was in the Fusion Strike meta, it was arguably the second best second format, I, I think most people would say, only by Mune, it probably had the best reasonable Mune matchup of any deck and format but back then, but times have definitely changed, so. Hit this chromatic. I'm gonna grab that choice belt. Um, we have fusion strike system for, for two. We find the judge. Only have one fusion strike system left. Those we need like double tablet. N no tablets yet. So evolve into other V Max. And um, yeah, I'm just going to. Max Miracle Point 10. Uh, I forgot that. Um, even though my Genesect was still flashing, I already used it. I just had the. Wait. Yeah, I still had the Sky Seal Stone. I. Yeah, it was flashing because I had the Sky Seal Stone, not because I um, used the Fusion Strike System. So I'm sorry. My, I'm sick. I'm tired. It's late. Um, so I apologize. But <laughs> most of you people already clicked off the video anyway, unfortunately. But I guess you can. Uh, you you can. If you stuck around here, you. And see some of my uh, greatest hits, some of my best uh, best quality gameplay. So that's what we do to reward my longtime viewers. <laughs> oh man! So they have a, a quick ball. Uh, a Drapion here would be very bad. Maybe we'll probably lose this game with a Drapion. This a Raikou V. So that means they're probably going to try to KO this Mew with a Raikou, which is sort of interesting. I'd like to then Roxanne them, or not Roxanne judge them. I'll put the, the double turbo on that Mew on the bench. So I chromatic out the Ultra Ball. Tails once again. Two more of the Genesect. I can quick pop the VIP. And we still see a couple judges in deck, so I'd really like to be able to judge path my opponent. Uh, there's a judge, so I will pass to the peak and judge to try to make it hard for my opponent to respond back. Uh, and we have that Sky Seal Stone to uh, break this path lock on myself. And we could just always draw that Collapse Stadium, which wouldn't be bad either, because I could um, discard that Choice Belted Mew and deny those three prizes. Tablet's a nice find. Cram's okay. VIP is worthless. So, promote the Raikou straight away. They drew the Melanie off the Judge. That's lucky. Um, so, they need a Bench Pokemon and a Lightning Energy. There's a Dixagoon, so there's that bench Pokemon. Earth and Seal Stone and Lightning Energy. So we we were very nice to them with that judge. So now we're in sort of a weird spot. I, I think the Roxanne's gonna be our go-to in this situation. Chromatic, of course, with Stales. So I will switch guard to heal that little 30 off the Mew. Uh, power tablet. Um, power tablet, and then I'm going to Roxanne. Uh, I have I have pretty solid odds to find my Mew or a Stadium Bump off of this Roxanne. We didn't find the Stadium Bump, we did find that Mew, so I can just retreat. Already played a tablet, so we'll just take this knockout with the uh, Techno Blast. And my opponent needs to have a very good two cards or three cards with the top deck to be able to do anything against us. 
you know, what if they just had a attach boss of three cards? I would be fitting considering how this game is gone. But incredibly unlikely. So that just a paralyzing pull. You can retreat another immune with the game. And yes, my point does concede. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I I tried so hard to get a good Lugia game. I'll throw up on the screen here. I, uh, I spent like an hour and a half just drop of uh, just playing opening hands. And if I hit, uh, as soon as my opponent revealed their active, if it wasn't a Lugia, I would scoop. I played literally 60 games trying to find a Lugia. I hit one Lugia and they bricked out. It made me so upset. Like I wanted to get a good Lugia game, but I was sort of on a time crunch this weekend considering how busy I was that I, I'm sorry that this one wasn't my highest quality games ever, but I hope just that the, I wanted to get this, this video out there, keep the, the uh, content going. There still was some uh, things to be learned. I still got to at least share that dreamy package that Xander did play. But um, once again, thank you guys for watching. And um, I've done a couple other videos on Mew. Uh, so check those out on my channel if you want to see more gameplay with, with, with Mew. And um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and smell all the all I'll catch you in the next one.